we start with an empty solution in which we are going to create a model. We will call this model data analysis. Okay. And uh, we will define a couple of things in this model. So we decide that we want to use MetaR for languages. Uh, so that's the first choice at the top. We accept that. Uh, now that we have uh, defined uh, MetaR and used languages, you see that we get uh, the MetaR tables expression on the X chart languages. The one that we need is here, tables. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is create a new table. Uh, we create the table, you see that there are a few attributes that are red, no path to resolve, uh, no name and no name here. Uh, you can uh, browse to a file uh, and once you do that, METAR will inspect the file and determine the set of columns in this file. Uh, you see that uh, the file has a gene column that's of type string, uh, mRNA length, numeric type, and, and so on and so on. And some of those columns here are, uh, so those two are actually uh, DC normal and DC treated. So those are group columns. Uh, so they're averages across groups. Uh, we will not need them in fact. In this analysis, the row counts are in these columns uh, that I'm highlighting here. Okay, so the first thing we uh, would like to do is to annotate that those are counts. Uh, and one thing, the way you do this in in Meta R is you press, uh, you you put the cursor at the end of the type and you press the opening bracket. This gives you the ability to define a group. Uh, you could uh, just type here. Uh, you could just type counts, uh, but if I type this at this stage, uh, there's no group uh, defined with the name counts. Um, so the way to work around this is to first define uh, a column group container, uh, this little C here, uh, in the same model. And now that I do that, I can actually press return under groups and I can type counts. And if I go back to this table, the counts now is bound to the group. Uh, so I also get auto completion, uh, so I can actually decide that this one is also a, a, a count. Uh, there are several ways to uh, continue to annotate these columns. Uh, the easiest is to just select all of them and to say add groups to selected columns. And then I choose the counts uh, group and uh, EOER. Uh, all of these are uh, annotated as being counts and that's useful. Uh, for further analysis. Uh, now I also want to indicate that this gene is an ID. Same problem, I haven't defined an ID group, so I can actually do this. Uh, if you place a cursor at the beginning and press return, it will create a new group. Uh, I call it ID. Um, you can now go back to the table and this is uh, bound. Uh, the, the ID group, you can navigate to the ID group. Uh, so you see where it is. Okay, so we have now annotated this uh, column uh, to indicate what is uh, gene ID and uh, to indicate what columns are contain counts. There's a little more we can do because you can notice that some of those columns have an LPS in their name. Uh, this indicates that the samples that the columns con contains a count for uh, were treated with LPS. Uh, so we need we need another uh, we need another group for that. Actually, we need two other groups for that. We have uh, samples that were uh, treated with LPS, and uh, we also have samples uh, that were not treated for LPS. Okay. Uh, now I'd like to know that those two uh, groups are related, and uh, the the way I do this is I define an LPS group uh, usage here. And I will simply bind uh, those two groups, yes and no, to the LPS uh, usage. And this allows us to do certain things. Uh, so, for instance, here I can go back to the column and, uh, and now annotate it as LPS, yes. Okay. Uh, I can do the same here. Uh, I can, so let's say that I want to uh, select this one. Uh, and uh, that's a group LPS, yes. And you see that the group's list increases now. Uh, so I want to do the same thing here. Or I could just type it. Oh, I need to type it right, of course. Okay. Uh, this is also LPS, yes. Uh, 
LPS equal yes and last one LPS equal yes is here uh, we need to s indicate that the other columns are not treated the other samples were not treated by LPS and the way we do this is we select uh, all of this and uh, again right click and choose uh, oh we need to create one at least uh, with this group and say LPS no okay and now we can choose the next three or four here and add LPS no okay uh, this one will do manually and this one also Last one. Okay, so now we have described uh, whether each sample was treated with LPS or not, and we are going to use this in uh, in the analysis that we will do. Uh, so uh, now the table is annotated. Uh, we can uh, create an analysis uh, from this table. So we we choose uh, this icon here, a analysis, and. Uh, we give it a name, HR analysis. And in here, uh, you can uh, press return to create new lines, but more useful is you can bring in auto completion and you will see a number of uh, statement types that are available in the, in the, in the meta R language at this time. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to import the table. Uh, so we accept the suggestion to import table and uh, if we use auto completion now we can bind this uh, statement to import the table to the one that we have defined here uh, and you see that they're very well bound and linked so you can navigate from the statement to the table uh, after we've done that um, a number of things happen uh, we now are able uh, to uh, use uh, the, the table let's say we wanted to do histogram uh, we now have access to the columns inside this table and we can just very quickly uh, build a histogram of uh, DC treated for instance uh, and uh, histogram. Uh, so this would uh, give us uh, access uh, would, would create a plot. We're not going to do this now uh, instead we will uh, use this to uh, do an HR uh, differential expression analysis. At the moment, by default, MetaR does not include uh, the HR language, uh, but this is relatively easy to remedy. Uh, you can uh, import the language. You do this by pressing uh, Apple L, uh, import language, or you do this by uh, right-clicking on the model and choosing model properties and adding here under use languages. We're going to go and look for the HR language. And when you do this, now that we have imported the HR language, uh, we should be able to uh, find it among the statements available. Uh, and when we accept the, the, the autocompletion for HR, uh, we see that uh, there, are, there are a few things that we need to configure in the statement before, uh, before it, can, uh, it can analyze data. First thing to do is to bind the counts uh, attribute to, to a table. In this case, there's only one table. Uh, it's easy enough to bind uh, this uh, counts uh, attribute to that table. Uh, here we have a model. We need to decide what model we're gonna use to, uh, to analyze the data in the table. Uh, what we will do now is uh, to, we can use autocompletion to see what choices are available um, and the first thing we'll do is we'll add a no-intercept. Uh, we, we want to build a model with no-intercept. Uh, and, and then it's a linear model that we're going to use. Uh, and we want to add an LPS term. So the LPS term is coming directly from the table that we've defined. Uh, you see that there are some LPS yes, LPS no. And those have been annotated with the LPS uh, as a factor. Uh, usage here is used to, to, to group LPS no and LPS yes. Um, so I'm going back here uh, and you see that this is a very simple model that we're going to use. Uh, this is a model without any intercept uh, by convention 0 plus uh, the LPS factor uh, which has two levels yes and no. And now we will compare uh, LPS yes uh, so the average value of, um, of samples that have LPS equal yes 
uh, minus uh, the LPS uh, no uh, the average of the LPS no samples and this is a statistic that we will actually uh, compare to zero uh, this is the test that we will implement with a jar uh, and you could of course if you had defined more uh, more factors you could add to this um, uh, you could add to this uh, model and uh, and list those additional factors uh, but here we have a very simple model uh, now we have to choose uh, you you may not uh, see that uh, I mean this is if you delete uh, you you can you can actually change uh, this uh, option here uh, edgejar supports different uh, ways to normalize data you could use common dispersion to estimate variance across all the genes uh, you could use tag-wise dispersion that will estimate one dispersion per tag or per gene and you could use trend dispersion that will estimate variance uh, based on the absolute expression level of, of uh, binning genes by expression levels uh, in this case we're gonna go because we don't have too many samples we're gonna go with common dispersion uh, you have to think to read the documentation about it and choose which which dispersion makes the most sense for you um, okay so now uh, now that we've done that uh, we could click on on results and if we use uh, the inspector uh, what's gonna show is uh, columns that will be created when we run the script so when we run the HR statement uh, the results table you notice that it's a table because it's green the same color as this one uh, we will obtain uh, columns including uh, gene ID and you see that this has been automatically annotated as an ID and then we'll use we'll have different statistics including the p-value and the false discovery rate and the log fold change uh, for the differentially expressed genes.